Hello students. In this part of video, I am going to discuss the last six lines of the poem Marshlands, composed by Emily Pauline Johnson. You can see the picture of marshlands or swampland or slough. Water and dampness everywhere can be seen. Long grass of blades, moss, algae, fungi. Everywhere is found in these kinds of areas. Now you can open page number one hundred and thirty, where something more is mentioned about Emily Pauline Johnson. Yesterday, in the very first part of the video, I have already told you our short bio of Emily. Now let us see something more. She was born and raised on Six Nations. Reserve near Brantford, Ontario, a poet and performer by occupation, she was the daughter of a Mohawk chief and his English wife. She was educated mainly at home. This means she had never gone to school. She was tutored at home, studying both English literature and Mohawk oral history and legend. Emily Pauline Johnson's poetry often uses the tone and structure of English poetry to convey native legends and beliefs with a dramatic intensity. Her first collection of poetry, which is The White Wampum, yesterday already I have mentioned, it was published in 1895. It includes both poems and tales. Tales means stories. Two more collection of her poetry followed as well as three collections of fiction. Now you can see a complete poem on your screen. But as I have told you today, I will be explaining you the last three couplets. That is equal to last six lines. So let me read the last six lines for you. Late cranes with heavy wing and lazy flight sail up the silence with the nearing night and like a spirit swathed in some soft veil steals twilight and its shadows over the swale. Hushed lie the sedges and the vapors creep Thick, grey and humid while the marshes sleep. A very beautiful poem which she thought of writing. Because most of the poets, their themes are based on nature, like on flower, trees, mother nature. But she composed on marshlands, wetlands, damp land, on which or about which nobody had thought of writing. Now line number 9 and 10. You can see the last word of line 9, flight, is rhyming with the last word of line number 10, that is night, flight and night. Here, Emily has set the scenes of late evening. She is wanting her readers to uh, visualize the evening scene and night scene in their minds and night in the poem very beautifully. Water and dampness are seen everywhere. In these kinds of areas, water and dampness, wet, wetness can be seen everywhere. Towards the end of the poem, in this particular couplet, that is the line number 9 and 10, we find that the night is nearing, means coming more strongly. Here you can see, sail up with the silence with the nearing night. Near, uh, nearing night means the night is approaching strongly and slowly it will be converted into a full grown night. The darkness is taking place all over slowly. Late cranes are flying lazily. 
as it is mentioned in the poem late cranes with heavy wing and lazy flight it means that late cranes are flying lazily the word late here means late evening or darkness the afternoon changes into evening and evening slowly dawn changes into dusk into darkness and cranes are stalk like big birds with wide large wings and long legs there is no rush evident in their actions you can see the birds very smoothly sailing in the sky over the marshlands they are sailing up in the silence of the darkness in the marshlands and flying and gliding in the peace of the the evening thus emily tells us that they are enjoying themselves in this kind of unromantic place for human beings this kind of place will be definitely surely unromantic nobody would like to go for uh, having fun or flying kites or having a kind of picnic nearby to the kinds of places for us it is not a romantic not a good place but you can see that emily is projecting that for different kinds of creatures like lizards wild geese and different kinds of birds and insects these kinds of places are quite perfect so she is tells us that they are enjoying who are enjoying the cranes big birds with their wide open wings they are gliding and uh, flying in the air very smoothly and gently because no one is there to disturb them for these birds marshlands are quite beautiful places with lots of blessings and peace peacefulness why what kind of blessings because human beings are not there the presence of human beings are not there that is why they are gliding or insects are there in peacefulness no human beings to disturb them or to kill them for their own benefits this narrative then has progress through the setting of the sun to the nearing night as i have explained you that the day is under the silence of the sky therefore cranes fly these birds fly without any particular pressing need because their flights are lazy nobody is there to pressurize them to make them move from one place to the other so they are just gliding peacefully lazily one can see them gliding without fluttering their huge wings now let us see the next two lines the next couplet and like a spirit swayed in some soft veil steals to light and its shadow over the swale veil and swale are rhyming with each other the meaning of swayed is enveloped or covered veil a kind of covering a layer here a curtain of night you might have seen um, attended many marriage ceremonies where you have you might have seen uh, brides covering their face with a kind of veil so it is a kind of covering or a layer and in this particular piece of poem the word veil is used for a layer of darkness a curtain of night steals enters without anyone's notice and who enters here the evening time and the night time enters without disturbing anyone any creature or any uh, of the birds there twilight semi darkness whereas the meaning of swale is marshlands swamp or slough in this couplet the speaker emily describes the action of how the night which is darkness is taking over the land 
slowly and gradually that is why the word steals twilight is the word uh, particularly the word steals is used here how dawn is merging into evening and then turning into a full grown night this scene is not at all distasteful in any way children emily is telling us that in this particular night in this particular scene we can still find beauty it is not distasteful it is not even hateful though people human beings will never like to go in and around of this area but still god has created these kinds of places so beauty is also present which emily is presenting before us the darkness is described as being like a spirit that moves slowly the darkness envelops or covers the marshlands and takes away the remaining bits of twilight envelops means here veils thus now its complete absence of light as it is night time so there are shadows over the swell means one can witness shadows all over the low valleys in the mostly flat marshlands now let us see the last two lines the last couplet hushed lie the sedges and the vapors creep thick gray and humid while the marshes sleep the words creep and sleep they rhyme with each other hushed is adjective which means very quiet and still sedges grass like plants tape grass rushes bulrushes yesterday also i have mentioned it creep crawl in slither or slide the snake slithers the child slides the child crawls also so the meaning of creep is crawl in slither or slide humid sultry unpleasant weather opposite of these days these days it's quite chill humid means sultry or unpleasant warm so children in the final couplet emily speaks on the hush that is the stillness of the darkness hush lies hush lie the sedges that is the stillness of the darkness which takes over the sedges sedges means grass like plants that grow in wet or damp areas or lands on page number 129 you can see the picture is also uh, made here through this narration one can feel the reader can feel a different kind of noiselessness or calmness in and around of marshlands if you go at night time to these kinds of areas or to a particular marshland you may find peacefulness but that is that will be of a very different kind darkness and stillness around this particular place so the writer is saying that we should learn to go to these kinds of places and find peacefulness see the beauty of nature not only in beautiful things but these kinds of things also and try to understand the mother nature more properly along with all the other creatures mentioned in the previous lines of the poem like a lizard wild goose crane etc and the organic elements means lichens moss mold mildews and different kinds of grass blades of the marshlands are silent even whatever god has created they are finding 
calmness and peacefulness in these kinds of areas then at the end she says that the night is unpleasantly warm sorry it is written warm warm w a r n but it will be warm w a r m and sultry the air is thick gray and humid pressing down on the marshes as they sleep in the stillness of the darkness the night is quite different students in the marshlands as already and repeatedly i have informed you but when the morning comes the great variety of life will become active once more the darkness will vanish and the day will brim brim means overflow with life for all the creatures living in there with the with this i end the explanation understanding the poem will come in examination whereas appreciating the poem is not included kindly learn the very first eight lines of the poem properly when the school will reopen i am going to ask orally i am going to attach a pdf go through the questions properly and see the answers and write in neat and clean handwriting in your note copies you have to write the questions with black gel pen and answers with blue gel pen and and after every answer without any doubt you have to draw a line with blue pencil color thank you take care